Thanks so much for tuning in this week. I'm not going to talk about music. It's going to be a bit of a special video. Instead, we're going to talk about computers and precisely computers for audio. It's going to be more of a techie video. So if you want to skip this one, no worries. If you want to see more content about music, just tell me in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Uh, but yeah, if you want to skip this video, it's not going to be about music. So feel free to. Thank you. A small disclaimer I have to say before I start it. Uh, this video was prepared before the release of the AMD 5000 series benchmarks. So basically, if I was redoing a build, redoing this video, I'd probably change a bit of stuff I'm saying about the motherboard and the CPU, obviously. So yeah, just keep that in mind, but the build is still very legit, so no worries. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how you can get the best audio workstation. Uh, this is a computer that's precisely made to beef up on audio and anything audio related. Keep in mind, computer parts uh, performance change very quickly, so in two three years from now, maybe there could be something better to do for less, uh, especially for example, with the 5000 series coming out soon. Um, there's probably going to be a very more powerful audio workstation that we can build. However, this one is still going to be very powerful and very legit, so don't worry. And all the concepts should be the same unless there's like quantum CPUs coming out or whatever. So yeah, uh, let's go. Now, if you don't want all the information, TLDR, bro. Here's the build without any explanation. So your CPU will be an i9-10900K from Intel. Your cooler will be a Dark Rock Pro 4 CPU cooler. Your motherboard will be an Asus Tooth Gaming Z490 Plus. Your memory will be uh, some coarser memory, 32 gigs of it, some LPX Vengeance DDR4 3200. You'll have three SSDs, two M.2 SSDs and one regular SSD for your projects and everything else. You'll have an Asus video card, uh, GTX 1650 Super Strix. You'll have a Be Quiet case, uh, Solid Base 601. Your power supply will be a Corsair RMX 750 watts uh, gold certified, and you'll have with this three additional fans from Be Quiet. Now that all of that is said, let's look at why we're choosing all of these components. The three main things we want from this machine are we want it to be a power horse, we want it to be very quiet, and we want it to be very reliable. You would not want to be in the middle of a recording session and your computer crashes while you're recording a take. This probably would be the worst thing that could happen. We'll start with the CPU. So for the CPU, the first thing we'll talk about is the reasons why we're going with an i9-10900K from Intel. It's a CPU that has a lot of cores, but also very, very good single core performance. And that's exactly what we want. Another interesting article from Steinberg, I'll link that I'll link in the description uh, where they talk about the recommendations uh, for DAWs and specifically for Cubase. If you don't know Steinberg, they're basically, they've been around for almost forever. They've done Cubase, Nuendo, Dorito, Doritos, whatever. The one that, that, that that's not the chips. Uh, here's some stuff they say in the article uh, that are very important. Processors with faster cores are preferable to a higher core count for real-time audio performance. The more cores are available, the more thread synchronization is required. This can lead to a reduced processing power and slow down the system after all. What this means is if you have more cores, you'll have to trade off more information between them, which takes time. Uh, if instead you have very strong uh, cores, but you have a smaller amount of them, they'll be able to do more by themselves without uh, talking to the others. So they should perform better. Enough talk for the CPU. Uh, let's look at the CPU cooler. We're going with the Dark Rock Pro 4 from Be Quiet. 
by this one. It's a very, very, very efficient air cooler and it's also very, very quiet. You literally can't hear it when it's on uh, by itself. It's, it is this level of quiet. You also have the Noctua NHD15, which is pretty much the same, but it's built a bit more sturdy, but maybe a bit less quiet. Still very, very quiet and very efficient. So those are two very legit options. I went for the build in the video, I went with the Dark Rock Pro 4. For the motherboard, uh, something important to consider is Thunderbolt compatibility. There's a lot of motherboards that will have this, you just have to make sure that you're, the one you choose has it. You might not need Thunderbolt right now, but eventually, we don't know, maybe USB-C and Thunderbolt will take over all the, the other USB ports. So uh, yeah, Thunderbolt is also used in very high-end audio interfaces, so it's a good thing to have one. So yeah, if you're going for a workstation, why not have access to a Thunderbolt uh, connection? Other than that, for your motherboard, you want to look at uh, how many USBs you have. You want to be able to plug your mouse, keyboard, your interface, your USB sticks, your whatever you want to plug in. I don't care. Do what you want. It's your computer. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the motherboard. Next, uh, the memory. For memory, you'll want to have a lot of memory uh, the amount depends on what you do if you do a lot of uh, vst strings orchestrations uh, you probably want something like 32 64 gigs of ram if you're doing mixing sessions that are like 50 to 100 techs 16 gigs should be enough but again if you can afford the 32 gigs of ram that's probably more recommended for storage we went with three samsung ssds uh, we are using the Samsung SSDs instead of another type because they are very good SSDs. If you look on, uh, at ben benchmarks, they have very good performance and are very reliable. You could also get some hard drives, however, they produce more noise than SSDs. So if you record guitars, for example, you might uh, catch some of this noise in your pickups. It's a thing to be wary about. If you want hard drives, uh, you should look into Western Digital. They are very, very good hard drives. So yeah, Samsung for SSDs and uh, Western Digital for hard drives. For graphics cards, this one is optional, but I do suggest you get one. Uh, your graphics cards, believe it or not, when you're in uh, your audio workstation, there's some stuff visually that's treated even if it's an audio workstation. Uh, so if you don't have a graphics card, your CPU has to take this load. Uh, you'll, you'll want to have a graphics card that can, that can take this heat and let the CPU do its uh, thing. This way the CPU can just focus on doing audio and you'll have your GPU to treat anything visual. Uh, you don't need the latest craziest GPU for an audio workstation. I suggest the Asus 1650 Super Strix. Uh, because this way, if you do video editing, you can also support this. If you don't do video editing, you could probably go for something uh, less powerful. This one is honestly not too expensive and it's uh, pretty good. So yeah, if you do video editing, this should be good enough. If you don't, uh, look into something maybe lesser than this. However, do make sure that your GPU has a zero decibel mode. What this is, is basically uh, it can, by the way, the name can be different, but um, if your GPU is not too hot, it won't need its fans to spin, so you'll have uh, no noise coming out from your GPU. So you're one step closer to having a dead silent computer, which is what we want to do with this build. All right, for the case, uh, we're going with the Be Quiet Silent Base uh, 601. And uh, this one is very good because the way it's built, there's insulation in it. Uh, the way the air flows into it is literally designed so that it's very quiet. It's built with only metal parts, so it's very, very solid. And there's no rattling coming from plastics or whatever. Also a bonus, it's designed very well, so it's easy to work with uh, when you have to build it. For the power supply, uh, we're going with a Corsair power supply. Corsair are very, very good power supplies. If you don't want to go with Corsair, you could also look at Seasonic. Those are very good uh, power supplies as well. 
uh, make sure that your power supply also, uh, like the GPU, it has a zero decibel mode uh, and a bit like the GPU. If there's not too much power demanded from the computer, your fan from the power supply just won't spin. So again, that's less noise. For example, if you're on a recording session, uh, you won't have the, the noise coming from the fans, so that's a bit closer to a dead silent computer. Last thing we're adding in this build, we're adding three extra fans just to be sure that we have positive pressure in the computer. What positive pressure is, basically if you have positive pressure, there's more air trying to come out from the computer than there is air trying to come in. What this does is, uh, there won't be as much dust in the computer because the dust will naturally try to go outside of the computer instead of coming in. And another thing, obviously, that our fans are going to do, they're going to provide more airflow in our case, so the parts will be able to get more air to cool down. This way you make sure that you won't fry any of your parts and you'll be happy and uh, you'll be able to mix or write or do whatever you want. Yay! Yeah! All right, so this pretty much sums up the build. Uh, maybe I was too quick. If there's any question, just leave them below. I'll listen the best that I can. Uh, so yeah, if there's three things you should remember from this video, you want a power horse, you want it to be reliable, and you want it to be very quiet. All right, if you like this video, leave a like and say hello in the comments. If you want more content like this, just tell me and I'll see what I can do. Alright, thanks so much for staying around and I'll see you soon enough for the next video.